Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the community conversation. This is a Hujat uh, initiative, learning from our past and present while moving forward to create our future. In this regular conversation with individuals, we will explore their struggles, achievements, and courage and disappointments that shaped and guided their faith, family, and community. Today, we have with me a young person from our community who is determined to go as far as she can in the game that she loves so much, football. How does she balance her passion for football, her academic studies, and uh, most importantly, her faith that shaped her outlook in life? I have with me a young person from our community. She is Sakina Dirani. Welcome to the community conversation, Sakina. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? You know, I never thought that I would be doing an interview with a female member of the community on football. <laughs> so that's the first one for me. Um, welcome. In any case, I just want to talk to you about your interest in, in football. But before we do that, can you tell me how far you have reached with this journey uh, on football? So right now I'm playing at a semi-professional level for Watford Ladies first team. Mm. Um, so I'm on, on a contract and we I train um, six times a week. Six times a week? Yeah. Okay. Well, All six right. days a week, sometimes twice a day. Right. And, and so you have reached a semi-professional level? That's correct. Mm. So the struggles are there still for you to reach professional level? Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> so how much struggle journey. would it be then? So it's um, continuing to step up the leagues, um, continuing to work hard, continuing to play hard, improve as a player, mm. and um, inshallah would be um, having good opportunities to make it further and inshallah play for uh, one of the best teams in maybe the Women's Super League. All right, that's your sort of objective? That's the dream. <laughs> right. You determined? Yeah. MashaAllah, well, very good. So how, wh what about your academic side of your um, sort of life? So right now I'm in year 12. I'm studying mm. biology, chemistry, and maths at A-level. Right. And I'm really enjoying these three subjects. Well, you're enjoying your academic subjects as well as football? Yep. So how do you balance it then? Well, that's that's the process because it means I'm very busy because mm -hmm. I'm playing football six, six days a week, sometimes yeah. twice a day, whilst also doing three very strenuous subjects. Mm. So I need to be good with my time management, with my discipline, need to manage my effort. So it comes to the, um, making sure I use all of my time wisely. So, for example, I when I have free time, I use it very effectively. So if I'm on the way to a game and it's a game that's far away, sometimes the journey can be two hours. Mm. Then I can be doing my maths homework in the bus. I can be doing my flashcards, studying for the tests. That's how you do the time doing. management. Yeah, and yeah, always think, yeah. using my uh, study periods in school effectively, yeah. having a plan for the day. Okay, today I want to get my flashcards from this topic done. I want to do practice questions on this and consolidate my notes mm -hmm. on that. And just making sure I get all of that done to be on top of it. Because at the end of the day, for example, on a Monday when training is in the evening, mm -hmm. if I can get all of this done, then I've got training to look forward to in the evening. Right. So what what do you sort of look uh, most forward to? Football or academic side? Football. Football is best. <laughs> That's the best part. What do you of the want day. to become, though? I know, I know you want to become footballer, but suppose you 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 end up with academic. Um, oh. If you are if you are not able to achieve, then what do you hope to do? Well, um, I want to continue with this academics. So looking into a, a STEM based career, I'm looking to do either like a chemistry degree or perhaps neuroscience, but I haven't quite decided right, yet. Right. You don't want to go into sports. Not particularly. I mean, there's some very interesting elements to it, but mm. I find the other subjects that I do right now are a lot more interesting. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, let's start with um, with the childhood because I think that's very important. And um, but before we do that, um, I would like to see this particular clip. So this is a clip of me and my brother playing in the garden when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Throughout my childhood, it's always been me and my brother playing in the garden. When I was little, my brother played football and I loved my big brother and I wanted to be exactly like him. So I played football with him. And so every weekend after school, we'd always be playing football in the garden. And I would do this consistently growing up. And that's kind of how the 
um, get that 10,000 hours of practice just by constantly playing with him and having fun with him. And I came to really enjoy this sport, not just because I was spending time with my brother who I love very much. I was also getting to play a sport that I really enjoy. And I became better at it. I enjoyed it more, became better at it. I played more, I enjoyed it more. And we've continued and I'm still playing with him. I still play with him on the weekends when he comes home from uni. Right. So, you know, I want to ask you something. When did the spark came? You know, the spark, <laughs> uh, I've got something for football. When did that come? Was it during that time or later on? It's hard to measure because mm. I've always loved football. And I think the kind of the realization that I can really do this came at about like 12 years old when I um, was fortunate enough to meet um, some of the England players and to see them living the dream like they were playing football every day. And I thought, wow, I can do that one day. Mm. So when did you know that you've got some special skill? Did, did your family notice it or you yourself felt that I've got something special here? Well, I think I've, because I've worked hard, I've acquired the skills. It's not something that so I... So really, um, you feel that you acquired? Yeah, Was I think... Was it not natural? I don't really... They think there's a starting natural ability, but like, for example, one of my teammates two years ago, she couldn't kick a ball and now she's playing in one of our academy teams and she's really good. So it's something that you really learn if you work hard. Mm. And because I've put persistent hard work in, I've become better at it and mm. I've gained the, squ the skills. But you need a special interest to start with. You yeah, need. otherwise... Um, otherwise, it, mm. it's difficult to do something for so mm. long that if you don't enjoy it. So this is very hard work. <laughs> okay. But well, talk to us about where were you born? So I was born here in Watford. I've been going to Stanmore all my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I've grown up here in this community. Right. So when your parents came to know that you love football, how did they feel about it? Well, they always knew I kind of loved playing football because I'd play with my brother when my mm. brother would go play SJ football. My dad would bring a ball and we'd play on the side as well. So they'd always encourage that, like, you want to play? Let's play. Let's have right, fun. Okay. So, I mean, the encouragement came from the parents the moment you felt that, uh, they, that well, you wanted to... Well, even before, like, uh, they'd always push me to be active and play sports. So, mm -hmm. um, and also, f it was a way of them to play with me. So, my dad would, my dad loved football as since he was a kid as well. He'd play with me. My mom would always be uh, standing there telling me, well done, Sikina, you know, I'd show her all my skills and I, I'd learn something. And I'd, look, I'd go, look, mommy, look. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So this is how it progressed then? Yeah. Well done. Okay, then I want to ask you something else as well. That You know, the, the closeness that your parents felt about you and football. Um, do you remember any instances where your father or mother sat with you and said, this is something that you can do and go more? I mean, for it? Not particularly. I, on the way home from every football game, I'm always like to my parents, like, how did I play? And they're like, you played well. This is what you can do to mm. improve. Or this is what you did really well. And it's just kind of that, like, constantly looking for feedback so that I can improve. But right. there's never been a sit down moment where like, okay, Sakina, you can do this. Right. But it's always just been like, ha, huh, you, you work hard, you're doing this. So there are quite an inspirational figures in your life now. Oh, absolutely. Right. And are they your managers as well? <laughs> yeah. Managing you? Very good. I'm the project, they're the project managers. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's your footing. <laughs> the other thing I want to talk to you about, that uh, your parents do come from East Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I remember meeting you in Zanzibar. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you find found East Africa when you, I mean, is it the first experience that you had or you've no, been I've, there before? I've, uh, my grandmother on my dad's side, my daddy might lives in um, Arusha. That's right. And so my parents both grew up there, so we've visited quite often. Right. And what was your experience of East Africa like then? Oh, it was, it was so enjoyable because all my family are there, like uh, a lot of Papa's side, even a lot of Mama's side are all mm. there. Um, Papa took us to Bangani where he grew up. Yes, I know. And he, uh, he yeah. showed us this, the same place he grew up and uh, was playing football in. Right. And it was, it was fascinating because we, we took a ball and we played with some of the local kids there in that yeah. same alleyway that he used to play in. And that was thrill. <laughs> that was uh, right. a wonderful experience. Right, wonderful. Okay. What about the community? I mean, here, you grew up in Stanmore community. How did that shape you? Well, most of all, it's shaped my faith because mm. we come here, Muharram, Ramadan, Kushali, Wafat, we're always here. Mm -hmm. So that's been um, 
the main part because you know madrasa you come you learn about faith but also i've played in the sj leagues and like played what is sj league so the stan mojafri's football right, okay. so when they have sports i've played with them when my brother played i'd be playing on the sidelines with papa mhm and so your your sort of familiarity with football grew as well and your passion yeah. as well i take it okay now what i want to do is i want to go into your football journey okay uh, so um there are some questions that i have uh noted down here you know as a muslim observing um hijab mm-hmm. why uh, did you choose to uh, did, did um Why did you choose to I mean this is a personal question now mm-hmm. why did you choose to observe it as opposed to remove it okay why um and then I a follow up question okay. there is okay mm-hmm. and then you can answer okay uh did you experience any discrimination mm-hmm. from your club or all the people you played with either because you're a muslim or because you observe hijab or both now the reason I'm asking you this question is because many people who are many youngsters who are listening to us may also want to do that and obviously that they it will they will be inspired from what you're going to say and mm-hmm. that's the rationale behind asking you this question okay so i mean we done balik at um age 9 or islamically um mm-hmm. is just uh, for the english birthday it's just 8 so you know you've been wearing hijab so for me i've been wearing hijab since i was practically 8 years old so it's never it's always been part of my life it's never something that i consider twice like oh this is strange it's it's something that's been part of me and i've grown up in this community where the large majority of the women wear hijab and so you come to mosque and you see everyone in hijab and it's never something that's not been normal and that's transferred to football where wearing hijab and playing games it's never been different it's like it's like wearing a watch it's like going when you're putting on your shin pads you've you still got to put your scarf on it's it's part of your uniform it's part of your attire whilst the club shirt is your club attire the hijab is your attire as a muslim right. so so did anyone ask you uh, anything about your hijab or did they were they sort of uh, curious about it So nobody's uh, I mean people ask but when they ask it's out of curiosity so we're lucky to live in a society where it's not strange wearing hijab they've all seen people wear hijab mm-hmm. and if they ask questions it's because they've never had a close friend who they feel comfortable asking a question to and it's always from curiosity it's just a a question like how does it work like is, is your hair long they're mm-hmm. just curious rather than this is different this is strange right okay so you found it quite natural sort of go from whatever you wanted to do hijab was part of you and that's it yeah okay good <laughs> and you did not encounter any sort of opposition or discrimination from any clubs or mm-hmm. any of your Alham- colleagues or anything alhamdulillah like no i haven't very good been supportive and they've mm. um, always just been interested in it it's mm-hmm. some i've always been someone uh, to them because they've had a close muslim friend they can ask questions about islam too mm. do they ask they do ask especially like in ramadan they're asking about like the kind of obligations of fasting and how fasting works and the and the not even water question right okay okay now growing up do you feel that generally growing up in the uk do you feel generally that uh, the the culture in the uk respects diversity did you do you feel because i think from your answer i think you do feel that they respect diversity I just yes. think it's not uh, something that especially as children it's never something that we look at and we look and say oh there's someone wearing hijab that that's different it's mm. just like oh there's someone with a headscarf cool move on like let's we've got a sport to play here right very very inspirational <laughs> answer i have to say that and so islamophobia and all that sort of thing hasn't been an issue for you at all no it hasn't been an issue very good and you know that has been a smooth ride for you okay So regardless of the different cultural and religious trends in the UK now I'm asking you a, a, a little bit beyond football here uh, regardless of the different cultural and religious trends in the UK do you feel overall that UK is supportive and a fair country in giving people from all religious and racial backgrounds equal opportunities in education uh, in employment in particular in your case your football uh, footballing career sport would you say that Well, I think 
I think the opportunity is there. We have mm. um, opportunities to play football, especially like women, and they're pushing like uh, for women in sport. And we get opportunities to play football, and we take those opportunities. And I think all, it's given to all of us, and we need to take those. So really, in your opinion, it's really us. We have to take those opportunities and make ourselves available for those opportunities and move forward. And we have with the SJ Community Football, like we've got the um, platform where our girls are playing football, our girls are playing netball, they're playing badminton, they play all sorts of sports. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, when it comes to football now, I just want to talk about some, uh, um, who is your, about football, who is your uh, favorite um, sort of a footballing person? Well, I'm not very good, Sakina. <laughs> I'm not very good at football. So some other things I'm going to ask you so you can sort of explain yeah. to us about football and your journey um, towards semi, semi-professional. semi So my favorite female player is Leah Williamson, the current England captain. My right. favorite male player is Maradona. Why Maradona? So Maradona, I've, um, I, when I was little, I'd be watching his compilations on YouTube of all those tricks and skills that he used to do and that outrageous goal that he scored against England where mm. he took so many players on and... Um, like even the hand of God that he scored. Yeah. Um, so I'd watch all of those. I watched that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So so um, the skill that Maradona had, do you sort of feel that you copy, copy it or what? <laughs> well, I've tried to learn some of his skills. There's mm. the Maradona spin or the roulette, um, as it's sometimes called, that I've it's uh, learned. It's called roulette. Yeah. yeah. What is roulette? roulette? So it's when you um, take a touch with the sole of your foot, um, or with the bottom of your foot, and then... Sp- Spin it backwards onto the uh, onto your other foot and spin around the player. So yeah. that's one of me when I was younger doing the um, Maradona spin. Mm. Um, just it's one of my that's favorite Maradona spin. spin. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it was one of my favorite skills, and that's the one I learned in the back garden with my brother, and then practicing against my dad. Right. And when when you showed that to your colleagues, what did they think? <laughs> they were all very impressed. Some <laughs> of them could do it, some of them couldn't, and we all had fun trying to do it. Right. Right. So now talk to me about your footballing journey um, beyond the garden that uh, that you were playing mm-hmm. in. So before Stamor, I played, uh, my brother would go to Brazilian soccer school on a Saturday. What is a Brazilian uh, soccer So that was school? where we played futsal. That's a game of, it's similar to football, but it's a smaller ball and it just works on your touches and like close control of the ball and it's played five aside. So it's a bit more time on the ball and it's more about the skill. Mm. So I'd play that on a Saturday with my, uh, me and my brother and, would go. And your dad used to take you there? Yeah, my dad used to take us yeah, sometimes. Okay. Mom would take us. Yeah, okay. So they were part of mm. this, okay. And then, and then there was a five-a-side, what was that five-a-side did you mention just now? Oh, so I entered the Can You Kick It uh, CBBC That's the one. tournament. That's the one. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So that was one we'd seen the advertisement um, for um, like children from like, I think it was age uh, 10 to 14. And um, so we'd submitted a video application. Mm. Um, of you a submitted a video application? Yeah. And you were chosen? Yeah. Okay. Um, of a couple of skills. And then I was chosen to go on the TV show where you do, where it was a kind of like a football course. Right. Okay. There is a clip there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. There so is. let's see that. <laughs> and then you can talk us through that. Okay. So this was the CBBC Can You Kick It? So it was like, as you can see, it was like the course and you dribble around and it was such an amazing experience to go and play with a, alongside other people um, and just kind of get that opportunity to go on TV as, um, as a young it's girl. the first time uh, that yeah. they were showing? Yeah. All right. It's the first so time they did Did you that. meet any sort of uh, professional people there at the time? So we had, um, we had some of the professional TV presenters who I don't really know, but apparently they're famous. Okay. Um, and then there was also a professional freestyler there as well who was really cool and had some amazing tricks that he showed us off camera. Let me ask you something about that particular uh, uh, program. Um, I mean that there's obviously it's public now isn't it? Mm-hmm. How did you feel first time <laughs> going there? Oh, was and pretty, how old were you? I was 12 at 12, the time. 12 right so how did you feel? It was so amazing it was like um you know, getting that opportunity in with all the cameras and the mics and meeting all the people. And it was just such a fascinating experience. And then when it came on air... So we you all... were not nervous? I don't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's confidence. Yeah. Okay. And then when it came on air, we were watching it. I remember going to uh, my master's house and then we'd watch it there. And we had a little clip and we were showing everyone. It was so exciting. So this was something very, very important for you, I take it. <laughs> yeah. Right? On TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're 12 years old, right? So mm-hmm. can carry on now. Uh, so, go through the journey 
until you become semi-professional. So from both the difficulties as well as your happy moments, if mm -hmm. you can. So from under 11, so about age 10, 11, to under 16, so 15, 16, I played in Watford's um, youth academies. Mm -hmm. So I was playing Monday and Wednesday evenings and then having games on Saturdays. And we'd play, we'd train, we'd work on um, our skills, we'd work on the tactics because it's it's an 11 side game there. You're not on the ball. In, in a game, you're max on the ball for about three minutes at a time, maximum. So it's about understanding the game when you don't have the ball at your feet and what you can do to to help the game because it's a team sport which is one of the things I love the most mm. about it and so we'd grow and we'd have regular um, analysis sessions with our coach where we'd look and we'd say okay in these er we'd have a, a sheet and that would be an analysis analysis sheet and they'd say in this area you've got this rating in this area you've got this rating so you're lacking in this area we need to improve on that so for example I'm a left footed player my right foot would be scored a bit um, lower than my left foot so we'd say okay I need to work on my weak foot so so in training for the next few months would be um, just doing that. Yeah, so we'd work on using my weaker foot in drills and to improve that, so that the next analysis session we do, the score's gone up, and so we can see the progression and um, just working on the things. So working on strengths and weaknesses. So when it comes to then playing against uh, the team, how many people are watching you? <laughs> Well, the max I've ever had is 5,100 people. So now, when you are going into the football pitch, I take it, you know, I see, you know, the World Cup, that's the mm -hmm. only thing I watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the players are entering into this arena with thousands of people watching. Presumably, you would be entering like that. <laughs> and for, how many? 5,000 watching you? Well, that was the max I ever Maximum, had. Most, okay. uh, most times it's about So 50. how do you feel when you're sort of going there? Is it adrenaline or what? Yeah, it's, it's you know, as I'm walking onto the pitch, it's Bismillah Rahman Rahim. You know, you you think doing all your duas, you know, getting ready because you got to perform. So when you want to perform, you need God with you. Definitely, definitely. So how, how Iman, your Iman has shaped you in that case? Then? So in that case... Um, I mean, that's part of you, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the solid foundation. Before, you know, before you come onto the game, like you can see professional players doing it, they'll like raise their hands and make dua before they come onto the pitch. Right. So uh, before I start playing, it's Bismillah Rahman Rahim because we begin in the name of Allah. Sure, yeah. um, and another verse that um, that my parents taught me was one from Dua Kumail where it goes, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, go ala khidmatika jawarihi, it's strengthen my limbs in your service. Mashallah. And so oh. that's one I've learned and I've taken that into every game because when you know when you play and especially wearing hijab you're a muslim you're representing your faith so strengthen my limbs it's so important in, isn't it in god's mm -hmm. service yeah so so your iman of course has played an extremely important part now tell me something about salat times all right did you have to um, a time came when you have to pray your salat yes and so. and, and you did that and how, how was it? Well, how was the experience but for so the well. others and yourself as well? <laughs> so our game times often are around lunchtime and especially in the winter it comes mm. um, around the time of Salah. So I've prayed, I've prayed on so many fields, random fields. I've just gone and, uh, and, made, and, and made it baraka, baraka for you. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so when the when the time for Salah comes, you know, I, I tell my friends, look, I need to go pray. And one of them will come with me and they'll just uh, stand by, just making sure my stuff is looked after. And I'll pray. And that could be Muslim or non-Muslim, my friends. Yeah. There aren't many Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> so okay. my non-Muslim friend will just stand there, make sure my stuff is not being moved whilst mm -hmm. I pray. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, pray for us as well. Oh, oh mashallah. Like, pray for the win. Okay, so let's go back to your journey forward, mm -hmm. okay? So to get into the semi-professional level, okay, how tough is it? So for me, I was playing in the under 16 levels when the first team coach, um, the first team training would run alongside our training. The first team coach was watching our training. He said, I like that girl, she's got intelligence. So when you say intelligence, explain to me. So um, well, as I said earlier, football is an 11 a side sport. You're never on the ball for more than three minutes. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, so it's all about knowing what to do off the ball, how to understand the game. Because I play in the in the defensive position, so I need to understand how to defend as a team. Because there's so much thinking that goes in. So you have so much to be two step making. ahead all the time. Oh yeah, always. Okay. So I need to be able to think of like our positioning and communicate, and it's a team sport. Mm. Um, and I, that's one of my strengths: understanding the game and understanding, like you know, the offside rule. 
<laughs> Explain to me. <laughs> the offside rule is one of the complex rules. Oh, yeah, but offside rule. Okay, I understand. But if yeah. you ask me to express it, I won't be able to. <laughs> but I understand that and I understand how to utilize that. Right, okay. So that really helps. And the first team coach was impressed with that. And he, yeah. um, so I joined a couple of the first team training sessions and then I'd continue playing with them. And then shortly after I turned 16, which is when you're first eligible to play for the first team, I made my debut. And so. When you said debut? Explain the first time you play for That's a team. Right, but explain what, what happens then when you say debut. So I was named on the squad list um, okay. for the first team. So I was playing with players who were much older than I was. And right. then so okay. I I went to that game and I a couple of my uh, my friends I knew from that team who'd already progressed. And so I got to play and I started that game as, the, as uh, one of the defenders. Um, and I got to play with them in a first team game. And I've continued playing in first team games. And now this season, I'm a full time um, first team player under the contract. Right. Under the contract. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Yep. Got, got a picture of that. Tell me something. Setbacks now. Have you had setbacks in, in your career so far? Footballing oh. career? Well, progression is not linear. So sometimes, like, we always think that, like, you're going to improve football and it's going to go like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit of a wobbly line. Sometimes it dips, sometimes it goes up, sometimes right. it dips a bit more. So when it dips a bit more, what happens? What happens is you need to continue working hard and not get disappointed because right. sometimes it'll be that you have maybe two game, bad games in a row. You need to take that. You need to see what went wrong. You need to improve, but you need to not be harsh on yourself. And you need someone like your parents telling you, it's okay. You'll do better next time. You're better than that. You can do better. So you have a parental meeting then? <laughs> a family meeting? Well, on the way home from the, these, we have long drives to games. So on the way home, uh, Papa, how did I play? Shut you up. We'll find it. Papa knows football <laughs> very well. Then. He knows. Okay, okay. So then Papa can tell me, ah, this wasn't very good, but this was good. Mm -hmm. We need to keep doing this and we can work on this. Now I can understand Papa's role in your in the football because he, he's, he accompanies you, I take mm -hmm. it. What about mum? Oh, mom How is mum's role in all this? Oh, mum is the central role. Central. <laughs> she's she's constantly there for me, like the dropping and picking, she's there, the laundry, the food. Every every time after a game, machi bhato, kukupaka, it's always there. But <laughs> you also like it? I love it. Okay. But also, she also encourages me. Like mm. sometimes Papa can be the harsher one. So Mama can tell me, I'm doing well. Come on, Sakina, you're good. Come on, right, head right, up, right. you know. So and then even she's come to understand the game very well as well. So mm -hmm. she can tell me, Sakina, you need to take it around a player like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, mom says that? Yep. Impressive. Now, what about your brother then? My brother, oh, he's the, he he understands the game very well as well. And he's always um, supporting me. I think we have a picture of me and him at one of the games. Mm. He's just so proud of me as well. So he's encouragement from him, but also he can, he's a bit harsher and critical. Um, right. Like, well, why were you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Finally, what would your advice be to a female and male youth who wants to play sports professionally whilst observing tenets of their faith? Work, work hard. I mean, yes, go on. So I had the pleasure of meeting one of the England players um, and she told me that the advice she'd received from her now, favorite that player. English, uh, English uh, player, uh, Leah uh, Williamson, uh, yeah, current captain of the England team. She's right. won the Euros. Really? So she told me that Kelly Smith, another England player, had told her that to dream big. And I'm, I'm saying the same thing. And I've, I've said it to a couple of other people as well. Right. But dream big because we can achieve. There's so much potential if you work hard and um, continue with your faith. And you do everything in the name of Allah, like always, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mm. And faith would not come into it at all uh, in the sense in the sense that it cannot be an obstruction in any way. It is way. never an obstruction. Never, yeah, because you have proved it. <laughs> Mashallah, you have proved it, and we are proud of you as a as a community that uh, you have achieved so much. And as I said in the beginning, I never thought that <laughs> I would be interviewing a um, female member who is so much passionately interested in football because it never entered my mind. <laughs> but now I'm interviewing you. <laughs> So we hope that you become a professional player and go far uh, with your mum's and dad's dua uh, and the community behind you. Okay, thank you for listening to our conversation. I'm sure the determination and uh, uh, Sakina's success in what she wanted to achieve must have been inspirational to many uh, members of our community. 
What must have touched many of us uh, is her resolve to remain firm to her value as a Muslimah and how her Iman is shaping her outlook. Until next time, I wish you all well and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all under his rahmah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.